Good day. We're looking at the brain sarcophagus and we're now finally wrapping it up. This will be our last video on it. We're going to look at ionization energy and the summary. All right, so we arrive here. Now the nice thing is if you understand atomic radii and why it gets smaller to the right, why it gets bigger going down, you're off the races because the explanations for the size are going to be the same as the explanations for the changes in ionization energy. The only difference is, is as an atom gets smaller, it requires more energy, more ionization energy to remove that electron. And as an atom gets bigger, then it requires less energy because it's not as tightly held. So we say, hey, you take an element, you hit it with energy. This could be in the form of heat or electricity an electron pops off. And what do we see? So we look at the third period. Well, we have different numbers of electrons, but we also know we have different numbers of protons. So for sodium, we have 11 protons. By the time we're down to argon, we have 18 protons. So what we expect to happen is, as we go to the right, the ionization energy is going to get bigger because we have more protons holding these electrons. Even though the electrons go up, we get a greater nuclear charge. So here we have sodium with 11, argon with 18 protons, so argon can clamp down it more tightly, and we see we get much more ionization energy. Same thing going down a group. As you go down a group, what you're going to find is the atoms are getting bigger, so the ionization energy gets smaller. It's easier to remove an electron. Now there's also something called IE1, IE2, IE3. What IE stands for is ionization energy. IE1 means removing the first electron, IE2 means, means removing the second electron, and IE3 means you're trying to move a third electron if possible. And the rule is that if you remove one electron, you've taken away the the highest energy electron. You've taken away the easiest electron. So automatically, the second ionization energy is going to be bigger than the first, and that's because it's harder to remove the second one. It's held more tightly. And that pattern carries on, and that's what it's talking about right in here. And you have some charts in chapter 11 you could look at to see that is true in terms of the data. So let's look at a summary of our trends. We know that atomic radii and ionization energy are going to do the opposite of each other, the reverse. So if atomic radii gets smaller across a period, ionization energy gets bigger. We should also know from previous years, metallic properties decrease across a period. Then we go down a group. So atomic radii increases down a group, therefore ionization energy decreases down a group, and metallic properties increase down a group. Now actually, before we get to the last thing there, so what we're really saying is you can see atomic radii and metallic properties have a lot of similarities. If atomic radii increases, metallic properties also increase because we know one of the properties of metals is they tend to lose electrons. And here we have atomic radii decreases across a row, and therefore metallic properties decrease across a row because it's harder for them to lose electrons. In fact, nonmetals want to gain electrons. For metals, well, they form electron, or form electrons, they form ions by losing electrons, and therefore their ionic radius is going to be less than their atomic radius. And for nonmetals, well, we know they gain electrons to form an ion, and therefore their ionic radius will be larger than their atomic radius. Those are the key ideas. Here are some tables you can look at, not really memorizing, they're just illustrating some of the patterns shown in this crazy brain sarcophagus.